I want to talk to you about a time when my my daughter almost died. Let me tell you something. Baby cribs are dangerous. They are really dangerous. You need to be careful. There are some things that could take the life of your precious child. So I remember, um, you, you know, there's parenting philosophies and uh, methods and, and tactics and different books and whatever. And my wife and I landed on one where generally, I say generally, we will let a child cry for 10 minutes before we go check on them. And a part of that, is, uh, as we understand it, is if, if we put them in the crib to go to bed and they just start crying, well, what do you do? You run over there, you pet them, you pat them, you, you hang out with them. Well, you're, you could also be training them to cry every time they don't want to be in there. So a part of it was, we're going to put you down. for If you're still crying after 10 minutes, then I'll come in. But I ain't coming in the first 10 minutes. So uh, a little pretext to the story was, if you know cribs, they got these little vertical bars um, going up and down, and uh, one of them broke. Now, if you know what a bumper is, it's a cotton thing. It's about eight inches high. That way, when they're, the babies are in there, they can kind of lean against the side of the crib, and it doesn't hurt them as much. And I'm like, well, it's just one. So, you know, some of these slats that go up and down, maybe you can stick... Um, Maybe you can put two or three fingers in between them, but you don't want the baby's head to get through, right? So, well, this one broke, so now we got double the distance minus that little bar in the middle. So now, you know, a head could get through, and that's not good. And I thought, well, the bumper's up. Um, and, you know, babies are real cute when you set them down. They just kind of stay there. You think they don't move, but they actually wiggle all around the crib. But I thought, well, we'll just set her here, and I'm going to go take a nap. And uh, have you ever been so tired you can hardly think straight? I mean, really super tired. I'm, even though I'm a father, even though I'm trying my best, I'm tired. So I'm, I remember laying down. Man, the 10 minutes, it's just starting. To, you have kids and you lay down, boom. They're crying the moment you leave, right? The, the one time you need that. And I remember fighting tiredness. Like, oh, it's 10 minutes. Got to wait 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, I wait that 10 minutes and I'm about to fall asleep. And I, I told myself, there's a rule. We check on the baby after 10 minutes. And don't you know, this is my first child. And look, this wasn't the first week we had her. So like, you know, a lot of times before, it's almost never a big deal. But I go in there. Now she had backed out of the crib. So her legs and her booty slid out that hole. Well, guess what? The head got stuck. That was scary because I'm walking into the door and I see a baby daughter with their, their tippy toes on the floor, head all turned sideways, crying violently. That was one of the worst things I saw. And I, let me tell you, time slows down. When it's emergency mode, and I remember uh, just thinking like the Hulk, I'm just going to go over there and just break all those wooden slats with just one little, uh -uh, you know, but I thought, wait a minute, I can't do that because I, I don't want to hurt the baby. And I, I mean, in, in a tenth of a second, I'm in pursuit to, to, to save my daughter's life, and instead of overreacting and violently breaking things. I just lightly picked her up and, and finagled her head out of there and hold the baby. And I, I tell you what, we're going to talk about cribs in a second, but I just want to take a moment to, to thank God. And God has a Holy Spirit. He wants to put the Holy Spirit in your life and he wants to speak to your conscience. Sometimes we can feel an inner thought it might be it sounds sometimes like a voice, but with these inner thoughts tell us we should do this or shouldn't do this or go check on this. And as a parent, look, you need more than just knowledge to raise them babies. They can get in trouble. So if you hear something, go check on the babies. Make things safe. Don't do what I did. And by the way, I, I had five kids, so I, I do not recommend wooden cribs after that that event. That was absolutely terrible. Daycares generally by a metal crib, and I wish I would have bought the metal crib, but 
you know, with five kids, if you're going to have five kids over eight years, uh, that metal crib's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And you know what? They're probably $200 instead of 700 and you could probably get one used. Just make sure it's safe. So uh, also things with cribs, uh, you got to make sure the mattress isn't smaller than designed for the crib. You don't want them to get stuck. And for you new parents, listen up here. Some of y'all got these fancy gizmos. You want to have a little baby monitor with the camera to watch the baby, and that's great. If there is a cord on that monitor, you can't leave that in the crib. What if they get their hand wrapped in it? What if it gets wrapped around their neck? Or the, the, the blinds by the windows, they have a pull string. You have to be careful with anything around the crib. And really, when you're raising children, new parents, listen up. Your job is safety and feeding them and clothing them, providing shelter. And if you're nervous how to be a good mom, how to be a good dad, start with the simple stuff first. Let's keep the baby alive. You will figure out how to communicate and love your child if it's your first. It's time to arise. Now is the time to stand firm in your holy royal blessing. So come on now, click another video because it's important to keep on growing.